So let me start this video off by saying as an entrepreneur, depression can be almost inevitable because there's so many factors that deal into entrepreneurship that cause the perfect recipe for depression. Some of those are like loneliness, feeling like you're crazy about an idea that you're trying to start, everyone around you doing something completely different than what you're doing. But knowing this allows you and helps you to be able to prevent it from happening. And whenever you see the signs, you step in front of it and do what you need to do to get yourself out of a negative mind frame or a depressed mind frame. And it also clears the road ahead of you to kind of understand what journey that you're about to face going into the world of entrepreneurship. And that's why I'm making this video. So I'm Nate, I'm an entrepreneur based in the US. And in this video, I'm gonna be discussing with you three actionable and practical steps that you can apply if you're struggling with depression as an entrepreneur. So first disclaimer, I'm not a therapist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not any of that. I'm just an entrepreneur who has dealt with some of these things. So what I'm gonna be sharing with you in this video are things that I've used in my life as an entrepreneur over these years and things that have worked for me. If you're struggling with depression and it's getting worse and worse, let me be the first to tell you there are professionals that can help you, right? You're not alone. There are people out there that want to help you to get yourself out of that mind frame. So you gotta be brave enough to say, I need help and go out there and seek the professional help from a therapist or somebody who is designed to actually help you out. So without further ado, let's jump in. So first of all, if you're struggling with depression as an entrepreneur, you need to make your lines and boundaries more clear than ever before. So you might ask, what do you mean by that, Nate? So according to startupguide.edu, most entrepreneurs can expect a roller coaster of intense ups and downs while growing their business. I deal with it all the time. Literally, one hour you could get the best news of your life, your business could make a lot of money, and then the next hour, the next minute sometimes, you could hear some crazy news, like you're getting sued. Like it is that contrasting, it's crazy. And like I said before, a perfect recipe for, you know, some depression. Recent statistics have shown a very alarming healthcare crisis looming within startup culture. You know, everybody wants to start a business and they want to make money, but a lot of people don't know what it takes to do it. And so, so many people are starting these companies before they even kind of like know themselves and know what they want to do. And then when they're hit with these issues, boom, depression. So according to a study led by Dr. Michael Freeman, who's a clinical professor at the University of California, San Francisco. They tested a group of entrepreneurs and non-entrepreneurs. And in that study, about 30% of entrepreneurs recorded to be depressed, whereas about 15% of non-entrepreneurs recorded to be depressed. So almost double the amount of people in that study were depressed and they were entrepreneurs. So why is this happening to us as entrepreneurs? So a lot of times within entrepreneurship, the line between business and work and personal life are completely blurred. D blurred is the wrong word, gone. <laughs> so like I said earlier, you have to make those lines pretty clear and I'm still working on this. So here are some of my tips for you of things that have worked for me in the past. So you must set the time to work and you must set the time to stop. So let me give you an example. If you wanna work more than anyone else as an entrepreneur, fine, perfect. But just make sure you decide how many hours you want to work and then stop after those hours. If you want to work 10 hours a day, right? After those 10 hours, stop working. For me, as you can see, I'm in my office right now. I have another room that I use to sleep. So whenever I'm done working, I do not take this laptop from out of my office. Sometimes I do though. Let me not say never, because that's not true. But most of the time, my laptop stays in here. My camera stays in here. So if I go to my living room to eat, I'm in there eating. If I go to my bedroom, I don't take my laptop in my bedroom, so I'm in there sleeping. You have to stop. When you were in your corporate office, you worked for seven or eight hours a day. You had your laptop and your computer at work and then you left there and then work stopped. So it kind of has to be similar, right? I'm not saying it has to be the same, but it has to be similar. Because of the pandemic and everything that happened, it kind of blurred the lines of work for like everybody. So what I'm saying is applicable to kind of like everybody, but you have to make those lines very, very clear for yourself. And then when you understand that 
your life is not necessarily defined by your work. Your life is defined by your character. That allows you to divide them a little bit better and understand that you are more than just your work. And yes, your work is your purpose and it helps you help people and things of that nature, but that's not all you are. You're a person. Another quote from Startup Guide says that founders and entrepreneurs are twice as likely to suffer from depression, psychiatric hospitalization, and suicidal thoughts. So this stuff is really serious, y'all. You have to really catch it before it happens. And also in that time that you're not working, you have to have a hobby. You have to have something else that you're doing to stimulate your mind in another way that doesn't have to do with work. Maybe it could be drawing. Maybe it could be playing instruments. You see my guitar always back there in the back. I got a keyboard and stuff as well. I love music. Stuff like that, you know, helps to balance out your life. So write that one down. You got to clearly define it. And you can actually take out your notebook and write down the stuff you're going to do for work you know, when you're doing your to-do list or whatever, and then write a line and then write the other things that you're going to do for yourself. So number two, you got to practice self-compassion. So as an entrepreneur, it's so easy to neglect the things that affect our mental and emotional health. So example, eating healthy, sleeping regularly, exercising, spending time with family, spending time with friends. Those are all things that it's almost glorified in some cases to neglect for the sake of being an entrepreneur for the sake of starting a business. But actually, let me be the first person to tell you, those are the things that you're supposed to be drawing closer to. Those are all forms of self-compassion. You have a heart, you have emotion. Those things are part of your mental health as well. So you gotta show a bit more of attention to those things. So I know you guys are asking, Nate, is that all I need to do? So before I answer that question, right? Let me ask some questions to you personally as you're watching this video. And you can answer these to yourself or you can write them down. So first of all, how are your eating habits? How have your eating habits been lately? Are you eating healthy foods? Are you eating processed foods? Are you spending time to cook? Are you prioritizing putting good things in your body? Because believe it or not, the food that you eat affects everything. It affects your mood, it affects your health, it affects your energy. All of those things are correlated with the foods we eat. Number two, what about exercise? Are you exercising on a regular basis? And that's not just exercising your body, that's exercising your mind. Are you practicing meditation? Are you praying? Are you doing things like that that allow for you to be mindful and to be able to guard your thoughts and guard your heart? This stuff is really important, guys. What about spending time away from your gadgets? Things like your laptop, your phone, your camera, your iPad, the TV. Have you spent some time to relax your eyes from these things and maybe take a walk outside and see the marvels of the earth? So what about this one? Are you spending time with family? Are you spending time with your friends? Are you pushing them away? When's the last time you called a parent? When's the last time you called one of your siblings? When's the last time you talked to your college roommate or someone you had a great friendship or relationship with in the past? If you haven't done those things that I've just mentioned, you're probably in the beginning stage or slipping into depression. We have to be honest with ourselves. That's the first step of changing. That's the first step of getting better. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're listening to what I'm saying right now. I hope it's resonating with you. I hope it's sinking in because I don't want you guys to deal with some of the stuff that I've dealt with in the past. I want you to see it coming and address it. So number three, and this is something that is super important. It's something that I still am getting better at. So I know it's something that needs to be discussed. Celebrating your milestones, even the small ones. So the more you appreciate the success that you achieve, the more on the other side, you'll be able to balance the failures, the downtimes and the negatives of running a business. Have you guys ever gotten to the point where you're working so hard towards something, you're just so encompassed in it, and then you achieve it, and then you get to that moment, and it's like, is that it? Well, that's most likely because you didn't celebrate some of the milestones, even the small ones to lead up to that big milestone. So you were anticipating it the whole time, where in reality, the whole time you were reaching success. Think about that. It's important to celebrate the small successes as they occur, because this will refuel your motivation to keep pushing forward. And as you all know, as you become more grateful of what you have going on, more success attracts to you. So this is an amazing practice. 
especially when you're running a business, because you got to understand that no matter how small a victory is, you have to celebrate it. You can't be hard on yourself. You have to be gentle with yourself. And you got to understand that no matter how much you set a goal, the result is not necessarily all within your control. Some of it is. And I'll tell you what is your attitude and your effort. Those are the only things that you can control. But everything else we cannot really control. So first, you got to understand that you've put in the effort. You've done what you can in order for the plan to work. Second of all, you got to celebrate the fact that you took the step. You were bold. You conquered your inner struggles to be able to do what you're doing, even though it was uncomfortable and foreign to start with. I'll tell you guys a story, man. About, I would say, five months ago, I could not do this right here. I could not sit and talk in front of a camera comfortably. Four years um, after undergrad and uh, sort of this, so I think, but I think that moment kind of changed something mentally like for, Expanding past full employment. But one day I made up my mind that, you know, I really, really wanted to do this. I felt that I had a message. I felt that I had something in me to share to the world. And I didn't know how I was going to get there. When I first started making videos, I was so frustrated. If you look at the raw footage of some of the videos I made at first, you're going to hear all types of cussing, <laughs> all types of yelling, all kinds of just so much frustration with not knowing how to communicate in front of the camera like I would a regular person. That was super uncomfortable. It took me into a very low mental state. But until I started to realize that I was doing something new and I had to practice and I had to go through that to be able to become good. I started practicing every day. I was doing what I could do, it was my effort. And I stopped being as negative towards it. And I kind of came out of that hump. And in between that time, I actually did get better at speaking in front of the camera. And then the frustration went away and then the confidence came to keep doing it. So internally, I celebrated the fact that I was trying something new and it really, really helped me in my confidence to push forward and make this video that I'm making right now. Another thing I want to discuss is comparison. Right. One of the main things that you don't want to do is compare yourself to others. And when I first started, I was watching people like Tony Robbins looking like, dang, man, how in the world do I become this guy in terms of speaking? But nah, man, you got to run your own race. And I felt like that's another big reason why I was getting frustrated. I cannot emphasize this enough because especially in this digital world where all this information is right at our fingertips, you can scroll and just see so many different things that may discourage you. You get all these ads about making your business more profitable, becoming a better this, becoming a better that, making this amount of money a month, making this amount of money a year. And it's so much noise. So it makes you think like, am I doing the right thing? Am I heading in the right direction? But what you got to understand is that everybody is figuring it out. They're making that video because they're trying to sell you and make money off of you and make their X amount of dollars of money a month. So you got to really understand that and don't compare yourself. Let me tell you this key fact. In the world of entrepreneurship, you have to take everything with a grain of salt. A lot of the things that you see on the internet are just at the surface level, right? You don't understand what's going on behind the curtains of those things. You don't know what they had to do to achieve where they're at. You don't know how much they're spending to reach the level of monthly income they're getting. So let that sink in your mind for a minute. I think you guys understand what I'm trying to say here. So instead of comparing yourself to someone else, right? Someone who's your idol or someone you model after, compare yourself to yourself and measure your growth. And you do so by understanding that you've grown. And then slowly you're going to become that person that you want to be. You know, I always say work hard and work smart, because when you work smart, you're working in the right direction. And when you work hard, you get there faster and you got to protect this thing that you call your mind by all the other noise that's around you. Notice a lot of the points that I've talked about earlier are about you. They're about the inner you. Because so many times as an entrepreneur, you're having to worry about other people. You're having to worry about your customers, clients, employees, other people that you're trying to model after and things of that nature. But in reality, you have to spend the time to focus mental energy on yourself. And guess what? As an entrepreneur, your business is going to explode when you start to get yourself right. A lot of the problems that you're dealing with right now 
are because you're not in the mental state to be able to be the leader that you need to be in your business. It's kind of counterproductive to keep working in the direction that takes you away from growing as a leader. Again, I'm going to reiterate that. Most of the business problems that you're facing right now as a business are just a reflection of the business owner you are. So once you take care of self, you take care of business simultaneously. Just let that sink in. So I have a bonus tip for you guys, and this one is something that is going to change your life forever. You have to build your business in a way that aligns with your personal values and principles in life. Ladies and gentlemen, it's fair to say that we all have different values as entrepreneurs. Some of them are similar, but we're different people. So as an entrepreneur, you want different things. You have a why, the reason why you're doing it, burning desire. Right. For some, building a business is all about financial gain. It's all about building generational wealth. What there's nothing wrong with that. Money buys amazing things. Right. But check this out. The businesses that actually focus on improving other people's lives and their experiences, those are the ones that really, really succeed even more than others. So what makes your business different than others in terms of how it helps your customers? you got to really think about that and you got to align that with who you are as a person and what you want to do in society, what you want to do in the world, and what type of impact that you want your presence to be made as an entrepreneur. Take some time to really, really consider and think about that stuff. We need to think and act in a way that aligns with us. Because work and life are so closely intertwined and there's such a fine line between them, we need to find a way to have those values on both sides which allows for when we are working, we feel good about it. It increases our spirits even more to push forward and get through the hard times like depression. Shifting your business from a self-centered business to more of a people-centered business will change your life. It's gonna change your business and it's gonna get you out of your own head. So in conclusion, let me know some of your thoughts. Talk to me down in the comments, I wanna hear from you all, what you guys are struggling with, what you guys are dealing with. Let's have a dialogue about this because I don't know that it's talked about enough. So once again, I'm Nate. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.